Okay, so we'll go back to another video. So here's a definite integral we have is from zero to two of x squared plus one. And be careful for our differential over here. We have that we're taking in the differential is in respect to the floor function x. So um, x squared plus one d the floor function of x. So this is actually going to be, of course, this is completely different on how I tackle past integrals, where it's just a simple variable of just dx of that differential. So this is actually going to be, you know, a bit of a challenge. And this one's actually a fun one for me personally that I think it's interesting. So an easy way to do this, and it's actually, you know, the most basic and the simplest way you could do this, which I'm actually not going to cover. There's another way I'll be doing this in this video, but you actually just apply the Riemann Stilges integral, which actually acts as the generalized Riemann integral. So from there is you basically just plug, pick and play your functions that you plug and choose, and then you actually get the value you want. But this time it's going to be a little bit different. We're actually going to be analyzing specifically on how the floor function, you know, of our differential behaves because what we will do from there is that when we analyze the behavior of the floor function we're actually going to do a little bit of a substitution so substituting a different differential with that same behavior so it's actually the main concept the rather the main important point to understand from there and then there's also a couple of special functions we'll be utilizing that's you don't really see a whole lot in math well you do but it's actually more applied towards the physics sides of things so yeah so just be prepared for what's what's to come and um, I think you're ready for this one, so why don't we just jump right in? So first thing I'll do is to understand how this works, let's actually uh, first break up our bounds. So using the linearity, linearity, well, not necessarily linearity, but uh, really just break up the bounds. So what we have is that we have our integral from zero to one of x squared plus one, and then our floor function differential. And then we're gonna put this from zero for, not zero, but we're gonna break this from one to two of our same integrand, so just like that. Okay, so now you might be wondering, so what do we do from here? We just broke up our bounds, so what's the purpose of all this? Well, in order to analyze how we're actually gonna tackle such integral one by one, we first want to kind of figure out what the behavior of our floor function is behaving. So if you actually notice that if you were to graph specifically our floor function, that actually acts as a piecewise function, a step function. And then if you were to analyze the derivative, if I were to take the derivative of the floor function, you don't have to actually manually do this. You can actually just observe from the graph itself. And if you were to compare to the derivative of the floor function of that graph, you'll notice that it's actually similar to what's known as the heave side function. Our value is specifically gonna be that the x minus one value. And if you were to compare the two graphs together on how the derivative is behaving, these are actually very similar. It's in the same thing, especially since we're focusing on for one are our bounds from zero to one. And then you can actually apply the same behavior from our bounds from one to two as well. So with that being the case, our logic slash our um, justification to say this is that, so let me actually grab a different marker for this one. So if we're looking at this specifically for our bounds of x is in between zero to one, then the behavior of the function for the, um, the derivative of the floor function so the floor of x is basically equal to the behavior. So I didn't write behavior, but you can understand where I'm coming from from this. Um, you can under, you'll see that the behavior for the derivative of the floor of x is similar to the behavior of the derivative of the heave side function at x minus one. Okay, so similar argument. So the same thing. So for x is in the range from one to two, then we can say that the derivative of the floor function is actually the same thing. Instead, it's actually shifted yet again instead for x minus 2. So the derivative of the heave side function at x minus 2. Okay, so now with that out of the way, so now that's actually going to change our integrals a bit different. So now we still have our bounds from 0 to 1 of x squared plus one. So that would have to mean that now I've just replaced the differential for the floor of x with now the differential for the heave side function of x minus one. And then I'll do the same thing. So now this is from one to two of now x squared plus one and then the differential for the heave side at x minus two. 
So now I think there's also a function we're going to introduce. This is what's known as the Dirac Delta function, which is actually a you know unit impulse function, which if you were to take the integral of this over the real line, actually it's equal to zero everywhere but zero. But if you take the integral of the entire line, it's actually going to equal to simply just one. So the symbolic notation Rin is that the Dirac Delta function is written as like just a simple Delta function. So, or Delta symbol. So the Delta at X, so it's simply just going to equal to the derivative of the heave side function, so h of x, okay? And so if you're wondering what the bounds are, well, I, would, I actually said this, so just to reiterate one more time, it's going to equal zero everywhere but zero, so the direct delta at x is going to equal zero where it's not, where x is not zero, and it's going to equal to infinity when x is equal to zero, all right? So with that out of the way, so now I actually put in our definition over here. And so what I'm gonna also introduce is there's this phase shift of the Dirac Delta function. So that implies to say that, so the Dirac Delta at X minus A for A is a real number is simply just gonna equal to the derivative of the heave side of um, X minus A. And so now what we're gonna do next is now just replace our heat side function with the direct delta utilizing this definition over here. So now what we have is that, um, so just to reiterate, so that means the derivative of the heat side of X minus one is gonna be equal to the direct delta at X minus one. And so the derivative again for X or the heat side of X minus two is gonna be the direct delta at X minus two. Okay, and so what I'll do is we're actually going to substitute this back for the direct delta, but let's actually multiply both sides of our differential dx so we actually do that so we can actually replace this with the integral over here. So now that means, so dx, so that means now I have, so multiply dx both sides, so d, uh, heave side of x minus one is equal to Dirac delta at x minus one times dx, and then over here is gonna be d, uh, heap side of x minus 2 is going to equal to direct delta at x minus 2 multiplied by dx. And so we just replace this back to the integral over here that I underlined by mistake from an earlier, <laughs> the redo. So now just to reiterate everything that we've written so far, so the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared plus 1 of the differential of the floor function, so far we have established this is from 0 to 1 of x squared plus 1, then multiply by the direct delta at x minus one dx, and then add this with the integral from one to two of x squared plus one multiplied by the direct delta at x minus two, and then dx. And so with this out of the way, I think it's also worth mentioning that there's another integral that's gonna take place, and then we're gonna understand the behavior of the direct delta, how this works. So going back to the blue marker, the integral, so that means uh, another integral we'll be using is that this is the integral over the entire real line, of now this is the translation property for the direct direct delta function such that if i have a function f of x then we'll multiply this by the direct delta at x minus x sub naught uh, dx then that's simply just going to equal to f sub x sub zero over there okay but this integral is specifically used such that if we analyze the direct delta, so for x minus one and x minus two, as that definition states, so let me actually just put in the basics. So direct delta of x is gonna equal to the two numbers. So you have zero and then infinity, where x uh, does not equal zero, and then where x equals zero. So in order to understand the phase shift and then everything we put in for direct delta x minus one and x minus two. So if I have that direct, the direct delta x minus one does not equal zero, where does that take place? That's at x is equal to one. And so with that being the case, we just use this formula over here just to plug one back into that function over here. Same thing can be said for over here, direct delta x minus two does not equal zero. Where does that take place? At x equals two. And you just plug that back in for the function over here. So basically now to put everything back together. So um, one more time, I'll switch to a different marker for this. So one more time then just to put everything back together. So let's see the integral from zero to one of what is it? X squared plus one, then multiply by direct delta X minus uh, one, then DX. Simply as stated from over here, we can actually just plug in one over back into over here. So that means I have one squared plus one, which is gonna equal to just two and then back into over here. So the integral from one to two of x squared plus one multiplied by the direct delta of x minus two, 
and then dx. So we just plug in two back into over here. So that means it's just two squared plus one and then is equal to five. And so therefore the final answer is that now just put everything back together. So that means um, capital I that I should just call that the integral the entire time is equal to two plus five, which is simply just equal to seven. And that indeed is our final answer to our, what looks like a basic integral from that, you know, integrating at first, but there's that differential that actually makes everything a game changer that it'll mess with your mind. If anything, you don't know what you're doing. So, so two ways you can do this, as mentioned, use the Riemann Soldiers integral if you wanna take the easy way out, but if you wanna, for a more challenging, fun experience, then here's one way utilizing heave side functions and the direct delta. So everything in the world of physics, if you wanna put it in that perspective. So yeah. That's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.